Welcome to Raconteurs News. Good evening and welcome to Raconteurs News. My name's Andy Young. It's Tuesday evening, allegedly, and uh, we've got a great show lined up for you. Um, first of all, good evening, Jason. How you doing, mate? Uh, good evening, Andy. I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I just wanted to uh, say that I think what we should do is we should... <clears throat> we should have a new slot, a new sorry, a new uh, feature here on Raconteurs News mm-hmm. called Conspiracy Theory of the Week. Now I've just been washing up our uh, our dinner dishes uh-huh. and watching TV and watching I watch YouTube. I put YouTube on and I put and I've come across that Donald Trump is a time traveller f- conspiracy theory. And I'll tell me, I'll tell you something. It has got to be the most entertaining thing I've ever heard. It is one of for entertainment. It is superb. All oh, right. Have they got photographs of some witch burning or something like that? Then. Well, well, no. They what they they reckon that he's actually John Tito. You know the uh, the the infamous John Tito that appeared in the in two thousand two thousand and one or something. You remember John Tito? The name rings a bell, but I can't think why. Well, he's he was supposed to be at he started um posting on forums that he was a time traveller and that he'd come on he'd co- he came on and he said that he, he gave details of this uh, of a particular timeline. He didn't s- say it was this particular timeline. Uh-huh. Um but he's uh, this this that was supposed to be Donald Trump um who's been travelling forward and backwards and uh, he's trying to stop some sort of nuclear Armageddon going on in our future. And he's discovered that becoming president is the only way to do it. And he was John Titor as well, which is, I, 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 listen, I, I'm not pouring scorn on it. It's, it's as, as <laughs> there's plenty more, far more bizarre things <laughs> that, uh, that people post. But he were, yes, he was, he's supposed to be, a time traveler and he's trying to save the world and that's mm. what he's doing and when you think about it i mean would you if you think donald trump mm. you wouldn't have if you'd have said 10 years ago he's going to be president you'd have said no chance wouldn't you oh yeah you'd have been laughed out of the room yeah oh, I mean, and there is also the fact that donald trump's uncle was um he was a, a scientist and he apparently examined all Nikola Tesla's documents when he came out, when, when Nikola Tesla died in 1948, I think it was. Uh, when Nikola Tesla died, Donald Trump's uh, uncle was the man who the CIA gave all the things to, all the documents to, and said, is there anything that in there that we could weaponize or use or anything? And he came back and said, uh, no, but th- that's the theory anyway. It's it's fascinating. Really, uh, if you just Google it, every, when you, you know, if you're bored, <laughs> Google it. And there's plenty of stuff out there for that. But I think we probably should get on with tonight's show. Yeah, well, that sounds fascinating. I mean, talking of bizarre, I mean, <clears throat> we had a, a quite an eye opening weekend this weekend. We went over to Nottingham again. Uh, this time we we're at Paraforce UK. First time I've ever been to a paranormal conference. And uh, as I walked into the room to hear the first speaker, I heard him say, my, hello, my name's Brian, I'm 500 years old and I'm a time traveller. So uh, the time travelling thing seems to be a bit of a theme this week. And also, really? but, I mean, time travelling here, I think, today, because I got up this morning, opened the door, had a lean on the balcony and look out, and what do I see wandering about on the balcony and all over the wall? But ladybirds. You know, ladybirds, those summer insects that usually get in July or August. I haven't seen so many ladybirds for donkey's years. But the weird, th- the really weird bit is most of them are entirely black with the odd red spot on them. Oh. So, uh, hey. Just named for that, isn't there? Uh, Aren't they Harlequin or something like that? I don't know. Anyway. Oh, right. Anyway. If there's a name for it, it's not that rare then. Okay. But anyway, on to tonight's show. Um, we've got a great guest. I met him over at Nottingham uh, several months ago. I met him again a couple of weeks ago. Great speaker on the law and all, uh, particularly the English language. Um, I'd like to welcome to Raconteur's News tonight, Max Stutley. Good evening, Max. Surely good evening, Andy. Very nice to be here. And to you, Jason. Good evening, Max. 
lovely to be here. It's very privileged to be on a show and looking at your previous shows and all the people that have spoken. I'm quite honoured, I must admit. Thank you very much, Max. We, we're doing quite well, we guess, at the minute. Um, so, for those that are not familiar with your work, Max, would you like to give us a little bit of a, an intro to who you are and uh, where you came from and what got you started on this path, please? Yeah, um, well, I, I, I play music. I've been playing music most of my life, sort of, uh, going from town to town, if you like, almost. And um, eventually I ended up in Torquay, got settled, and um, then along come the council and decide to put parking, private park, uh, you know, residence parking outside the mm-hmm. house. So, so we uh, got together as a group of us, you know, we down here. We got together and went to every house and got signatures, you know. We thought a petition would be a great idea. We handed that in because everybody pretty much in the street and around wanted wanted no such thing and uh, well darn me if we haven't got residence parking they sort of just trampled all over our petitioning so um i i started looking into to local local reading reading of all things sort of you know, you know acts of parliament and most boring like documents but uh, yeah, once you start reading it, then you realise you need a, a law dictionary and, a, and a, a, a bit of an idea of what's going on. And, and um, So, uh, yeah, we, we looked into it and re- we realised that petitioning was not the way. So um, the next opportunity we had in which to um, express ourselves, if you like, to our local authority was uh, when they wanted to build a couple of tower blocks five stories on on the front at torquay next to the theater it's rather lovely lovely garden there it's beautiful if you've been down here it's beautiful it's lovely and open you know and they wanted to put some luxury flats up so um on on it it, we filmed this i i didn't mean it to be sort of dramatic or anything but it turned out that way um i i uh, in, in front of the, the, uh, the mayor and the full cabinet meeting, I, I withdrew consent to be governed. Um, I think I, I asked him three times if, if he was governing by consent, which he refused to answer. So I, I removed my consent. And, and those five <coughs> story buildings are not, they haven't been built. That was about six or seven years ago. And uh, there are ongoing things that we're working on, and, and uh, we've discovered. Uh, we think we've discovered a remedy, which we'd love to share with with the rest of the world. Especially, I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, where is it? Hounslow, or wherever it is, they want to build this runway. You can, you can stop that if they really want to. If nobody wants it, then it can be stopped quite simply. You, you, are you talking about this new runway that they've announced today at Heathrow? Into it? So is it going to be a yeah. third runway? The third runway at Heathrow, yeah, I, I presume it's going to be east-west like the other two, uh, the main ones. But um, yeah, we, we've uh, what we do is um, well, uh, it, I, I'll, I'll go I'll go about it this way. I, I was at a, a meeting the other day in Totnes. They had the, uh, the first meeting, a bit like Nottingham, where people gather and listen to speakers, and um, they had their first one, and it was. It was great. It was very well attended, and, and um, they invited me, which was nice. And I asked, I asked who among them had written their last will and testament. And three hands went up. So I said, "Okay, of you three, when did you write the first one?" <laughs> <laughs> and I explained to them that basically, uh, you know, you hear Theresa May or whatever, and some MP saying, "Yes, we have the will of the people." Well. Well, why don't we make sure they do have the will of the people, and and simply write down a notice of expression of will. For example, here's the application number. I reject applica- planning application number blah. Boom. That's all you have to do. And it's uh, it's <laughs> it, it's made a few people smile. I must admit, um, because basically people are going to protest. Now, the word protest. Um, well, it, it's in the word protest. So pro is for, test is an experiment. So you're actually for whatever you're actually shouting about. Okay? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. With trepidation, perhaps, whatever. But actually, that, that does tend to give the police the opportunity to um, 
well, test their water cannons and you know, whatever microwave technology they've designed. You know, if people go out on the streets and do it, what they really fear, well, I'll come to that later, um, you can object, but you know, you go into a courtroom and if you object in a courtroom, what happens? You, you're, you're opening it up to third party uh, adjudication. Yeah. So somebody's, you know, treading on your will. Or you can petition, and um, uh, a petition. And I, we, we've got an old, an old 1890 dictionary. It's a beautiful thing that we, we look at for some lovely definitions. And the the definition of that of petition is a prayer or pleading from an inferior to a superior. So you're starting on your knees begging. Um, so that's really not the place to start from. And um, so what we do is we simply reject, which is what government does. I mean, you see it everywhere. If, if, if you look in Hansard, if you, you know, if you go onto Hansard and you just put in the search bar reject, you'll get all these pages will come up where somebody's rejected something. And, and after that word, it, it, it's gone. That's it. They don't talk about it anymore. It's finished. Gone. And the mayor rejects, rejected our position, our petitions. That's exactly the word they use. So I'm, I'm trying to get people to use the word reject. It's, it seems dead obvious because you can't argue with it. You can't, you know, if you um, <clears throat> unequivocally reject something, that's the end of the story. And they know your will. Yeah, interesting stuff. So you say that this worked um, or has worked so far for uh, that we're going to develop some you say they're going to build some, yeah, some building, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's worked. And, and so far, I, Are yeah. you able to demonstrate that that has worked? Well, you know, obviously, you could tell no, us, it worked, but it, it uh, might be that if it's seven years, but it might be. Well, we we, we have another one on the go. Funds or something. We we have another one on the go. Um, now they want to build. We we have a pavilion down here. It's a it's a lovely old building that's. It's the usual thing. They've, um, if if they want to destroy something in a town, they'll let it rot for seven, eight, nine, ten years, whatever, and then say, "Gosh, look at this building, the poor thing. Let's tear it down and start again." You know, they they've, they do that with buildings. You know, that's that's how they regenerate places. And they wanted to get rid of the pavilion basically and build a a large hotel, I think. And um, we're in the process of trying to get people to reject that as well. Uh, it's it's an interesting concept. I mean, um, <laughs> it, it it goes down. We, we've been using language to to work all this stuff out and find out. It, it's a it's a long. It's been a long ride. It's been a long journey. Um, I'll, I'll go back a bit. I, I it, it's it's a bit me, and I don't like talking about me much. But um, I, I I deregistered my car, which which is. Uh, quite a thing to do if, you, if you're not really sure about what you're doing and um, so I, I, I <laughs> to do that I had to tell the DVLA and uh, the Ministry of Transport that basically I bought a car, um, it's mine I don't want you to have anything to do with it if you do have anything to do with it let me know and we'll sort it out so I, I put my own um, number plates on it uh, you can too which I thought was a reasonable thing for people to see <laughs> mm. uh, and and uh, I drove around in it for about I don't know about six weeks, and I I finally got arrested one night. I was doing a gig and um, I was putting the gear back in the car, and a couple of drunks were looking at this little notice I had on the front window, which drew the attention of a, a, an acting police sergeant. Which you know, words he was acting. So, mm. um, so he anyway. Short story. He arrested me. He said, "You have the right to remain silent." Blah blah blah. blah. Anything take you know. Blah blah blah. blah. Do you understand? And I said, "No." Furthermore, sure. uh, I refuse to give up any of my rights. I, I don't want to take on any any rights you wish to put on me. Thank you very much. And he didn't quite know what to do. So he he bundled me into the police car, and he said he wasn't going to write that down. I said, "Well, you've you've already lied to me, then, haven't you?" <laughs> Because, you know, you, you, you told me you're going to write anything I say down, and, and you haven't, and you're not, you're not going to. So his his partner got in the car, and um, 
I said, look, he's not going to write this down, but I want you to, to, to hear this. So I, I said it to her. And there was silence all the way to the police station, pretty much. <laughs> didn't, say, didn't say a word. And, um, and then uh, we were in the police station, the desk sergeant, he was a nice chap. Um, um, I, I said, what are you called? And he, he said, Sergeant, blah, 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 blah. And I said, is that what your mum called you? And he said, Nick. I said, hi, Nick. Nice to meet you, mate, you know. <laughs> And then this this duty solicitor came in and um, he said, uh, I'll, I'll represent you. I said, oh, great. I'm going to appoint you my fiduciary. you gone. Out the door. And the desk sergeant said, what just happened? <laughs> and I said, well, I, I just appointed him. He, he said he'd represent me. So I appointed him as my absolute representative. And he's gone. He said, what do you mean? And I said, a fiduciary. Do you know what a fiduciary is? He said, no idea. He's, you know, humble desk sergeant's got no idea about the law. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, I did eventually end up in, in Exeter Prison. Uh, they gave me... Uh, I went to court and everything, and that was, that was a bit strange. They, they, they asked me my name, and I, I... No, they asked me if I was the name they said, and this is where we're going to get with the glosser and all that, in, in, uh, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Well, basically, basically, well, I should start there, I suppose. It, it's um, <clears throat> it's down to I'm speaking to you with my mother tongue, right? And you're understanding my mother tongue because your mother, you know, g- gave you an earful when you were when you were young, and you learned, you know, and, and your brothers and or siblings that they've they've learned a similar but not exactly the same as you. So every mother tongue for every one of us is slightly different. And when we go to school, they. Um, they make us put it down on pencil and paper, you know, they teach us how to write. They what we think is the mother tongue. Yeah, but you think you're writing the mother tongue, don't you? Mm-hmm, yeah. But you're not, but, but it isn't actually the mother tongue because it doesn't speak back at you, it doesn't sound like you when, it, when it's on the paper, it doesn't, it doesn't sound. So it can't be the mother tongue, so it is actually another language, right? So we're talking, that's two languages we've got so far. Then... Uh, they teach us how to do that and then when we get into somewhere like court um, the clerk will be reading a piece of paper now you don't know what's on that piece of paper so you don't know if he's reading descriptive English Latin uh, Spanish you don't know what what he's reading but it sounds like mother tongue Mm -hmm. so we all answer so so when they asked me what my name was or, or if I was this name because it has to, it has to come from your mouth. You know, you you have to actually incriminate yourself. Um, I, I said, "Is that the Sestri K Trust that you're administering today?" And, and they sort of the, the, the clerk looked around at the magistrates, and they got up and they walked out. And they shut they they shut me back in the cell. I, I I you know thought, oh, well, I must have said something. I must have you know, done something rather. And I I I, I was young then. I said. <laughs> young it was about 10 years ago i don't know i can't remember now <laughs> so you were about you were about 20 oh well you know <clears throat> let's put it this way i'm at I'm, I'm at the wrong end of 50 of the 50s at the moment so uh, you know it was, it was about 10 years ago but i was a young man if if you understand my meaning i was mm-hmm. uh, my eyes had just been opened to this stuff and uh, i knew nothing as i i still know nothing if, if i if i need to know something i ask somebody who knows it yeah, hopefully, and they'll they'll tell me. Like, uh, for example, um, our MP, our local MP. I, I I asked him if he would be my fiduciary in Parliament, <laughs> which is also it's also on film. Um, that was quite interesting. Um, he, uh, I, I I went up to him and introduced myself as Max Stutley, man on the land, inhabitant. Mm-hmm. And he looked at me sort of quizzically, and, and um, then I said, I don't understand anything about what goes on in Parliament. And, he, and his face smiled. He beamed at me. It was lovely. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I said, but I understand you have a fiduciary position. So I want to appoint you, in, pre- in the presence of these people as witness, my fiduciary in Parliament. Do you accept the appointment? I asked him three times, and he, he, he was all of a sudden very flustered. And... Um, he said, I, I, I won't be accepting any appointments today. So he, he refused the appointment, and um, so I, I sacked him. Can, can you explain for people that don't know what a fiduciary is? 
Okay. Um, in uh, right, I, I think it's what most people think they're voting for actually when they go to the elections. But um, basically, a fiduciary is someone who uh, will stand, will will do their utmost for you before themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, that's probably the best way of putting it. So, you know, uh, people are expecting a representative to represent them. You see, I I didn't didn't know whether when you said fiduciary to the solicitor and and he left, that being the the fiduciary was being that he's he's responsible for all your, you know... That's that's right, that's right, yeah. Okay. If he makes makes a mistake, if, if he doesn't protect me, he goes to prison. Right. All right. Okay, it's 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 um, it's worth looking up fiduciary, um, the exact meaning of it. Uh, so, it, it's, it's just to clarify, Max, w- would that then put him in a, a, a conflict of interest with his oath that he's taken to the law society? Oh, sure, it would. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> God, yeah. Um, you, 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 oh, oh, that's when, when I was in court. I was asked to take the oath. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I I can't take an oath. And I don't think any any man should. Um, no. because uh, well for one thing they give you a bible and in the bible it tells you never ever swear oath yes and and if you want, if, if anybody's listening wants to know where that is that's uh, Matthew 5 uh, 33 to 37 and James 12 um, no 5 12 James 5 12 Matthew 33 to 37 and it's the sermon on the mount and it says don't ever ever swear oath because you don't know anything you know, and and and, and I asked again one in Totnes. I said, "Okay, how many of you here know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth?" And they all look. Well, when when you actually think about that question, and and, and you're standing there in in a courtroom swearing that you know the truth, I mean, it's total fraud. Yeah. So, and and it's like they know it's fraud, so they they give you the Bible to make sure that you're in with the fraud. So you immediately dishonour yourself. As soon as you take that Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course you. And, of course, I said, um, after you. <laughs> they, got walked out. They, they, they walked out on me twice. <laughs> and, and the third time they came in, they, they didn't even take any notice of me standing there. So, um, yeah, it's quite um, strange, really. That was... They, uh, I, <clears throat> I, I, I didn't realise it, but then I, it, it was my court. I didn't know anything about it really. I, I was just a nothing gobby young man at the time. But, so, um, so you end yeah. up in prison. Um, and what, what were you in prison for? What was the what, what, what did it say on your charge sheet? Well, um, it was interesting. Uh, the charge sheet with the charge sheet, I got a couple of statements. You know, one from the one from the sergeant, the acting sergeant who arrested me, and a wit um, a vic. Hang on, yes, a victim witness statement from the second. Um, the, the, the police woman and um, she was she made it a witness statement because in her statement she stated that she was intimidated or, or I tried to intimidate them with my knowledge and views right <laughs> and she, she actually got paid for arresting me extra you know she got compensation for arresting me because apparently I intimidated her because my views and knowledge were well, trying to intimidate her, I suppose. And so that was amusing. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, when it got to court, there was only one charge. Um, there were four of, of, at first, but then I suppose, uh, I mean, I, I, I own my car. I, I, I don't know what they dropped. I can't remember. It's a while ago now. Uh, but it was no insurance was the charge. And, of course, I, I didn't pay the fine. And the fine was six hundred and ninety pounds, and they they sent me to Exeter to jail for um, prison, not jail, prison for. Um, well, they gave me a month sentence, so it was two weeks. For no insurance. For no, no insurance. And this is ten, ten and, years uh, ago. When, when I, <clears throat> well, well, it was uh, twenty eleven, I think it was. I ended up in 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 the nick because I. It was a few years after the case because I, there were various things. Um, I was actually out of the country when the first court case happened. I, I, I didn't even know about it. 
and and now I look at the the pieces of paper that they sent me. They they got my name wrong. I shouldn't have even gone to court in the first place. I didn't even really look at it. But they they actually arrested me. You know, they came and took me at eight o'clock one morning. But yeah, I got to the prison and at the reception they said, "What's your name?" And I said, "Well, look, you brought me here. <clears throat> you must know who I am." <laughs> and um, no, that, that 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 was how it started off. I ended up being called the eccentric, apparently. And um, they put me in a cell with a Portuguese man and um, didn't really let me talk with anybody else because I'm a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, been a wing in Exeter with all the uh, the murderers and the the violent criminals and it was, it was nuts really. As a matter of interest, Max, when when you were in prison, how, how were you treated by the the prison officers and the fellow inmates? Well, that, that's another interesting thing. Um, because I never gave my consent ab initio from mm. the outset, um, they were very, very hands-off me all the way through. The police, uh, I, I, they, no violence at all, nothing. And mm-hmm. They didn't know quite what to do. And, and when they took my clothes off me in the prison, they wanted me to sign for them. I signed, I signed everything under duress and protest. Mm-hmm. And, um, and and of course that upset them as well because that means they can't use anything so I was actually in the prison without any um, well no record of it and and, and the other strange thing I, I learnt uh, I think it was last year or maybe it was earlier this year um, you, you might recall that um, there was a murder 30 years ago in Bath that, that became a cold case and uh, I lived in Bath 30 years ago so as it was reopened, they they sent two guys from Avon and Somerset down here to get my DNA to um, eliminate me. I think is the the term they use. And um, I I said to these guys, I said, well, why don't you just check my criminal record? And they said, well, you you haven't got a criminal record. I said, hang on a minute, can you go to prison without having a criminal record? <laughs> no. Okay, but, yeah. I said, well, what the hell was I doing in, in extra prison then in, in between these dates? And they were writing, and they, they were quite amused by it all, really. So uh, apparently, I mean, I, I, they've told me I, I haven't got a criminal record. So something along the line, I, I've done something right. I mean, going to prison was obviously not quite where I wanted to go. But along the line, I've, I've been gaining actual knowledge of how things uh, are working and thanks to uh, I'm going to give them the greatest credit Romney Stewart and um, uh, Rowan Lorian over in Australia um, a a fantastic door is open to all of us Um, the fact that we don't write down the mother tongue and the letters that they send us are not in English descriptive English you know um, (laughs) There's, there's all sorts of things. I mean, you, you get a council tax bill, for example, and you, you look at it, and you think, it's, well, it says council tax bill on it, so everybody imagines it's a council tax bill. But if it hasn't got a signature on it, if it doesn't comply with the Bills of Exchange Act, 1882, Section 3, it's not a bill. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, look, you look at it, and you go, whoa, it's not a bill. And then you look at it again, and you, you see all these things on it that, well, you've got all these capital letters here, and it's addressed to this capital letter name and uh, well basically it's it's not English it's actually not English it's, it's extraordinary but it's um, it's a foreign language <laughs> it just makes me laugh it's it's um, it's frustrating because you can't get this across to people without them looking at you as if you're stupid if you take a ten pound note out of your pocket and you look at it You'll see that it's it says Bank of England, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. But nobody nobody notices that the, the 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 word between bank and England is in a completely different font from, from bank in England. So it's not Bank of England at all. It's Bank England, and they're two separate words, not connected at all. And and that means it's not a legal piece of paper. You know? So 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 the font actually matters then. It, 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 the the font. Oh, the yeah. gra- Yes. Oh, it's 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 all incredibly important. Um, I, I uh, it it goes down to go back way back in time, bit of history. Um, 
the printing presses started in about, I don't know, 1340, something like that. And um, by the time they got to be loads of printing presses, each each press, basically, each printers had to have a, a, a book to tell everybody else what everything means, all, all the symbols that they're putting on their paper, what they mean. You know, obviously, A, B, C, and D, and whatever, that, that's, that's fairly simple. But semicolons... Um, M dashes, N dashes, hyphens, all, all that sort of stuff. Uh, square brackets, italics, underlining, all, all of it had to be explained um, clearly. Mm. And uh, and what we use, as far as I know, well, I don't, I don't actually know what we're using, but I think we were taught in in um, in, the, in school. I think we were taught um, Oxford style of writing printing uh-huh. uh and and i know that cambridge uh cambridge because it's obviously there's always been a battle between oxford and cambridge university cambridge university started using the chicago manual of styles back in 1906 i think i'm, I'm not sure on dates i'm i'm, I'm always a bit sketch, sketchy with dates but but these books these these manuals tell you how how if you're looking at a piece of paper, if you're not sure what the, the symbols on it are, you can look in the book and find out. And it turns out that um, if anything is written, you, you know how they always want you to write in block capitals. Yes. In places, you know, on, on forms, right? Mm. There's a reason. It's it, it's not so the computer picks it up easier. It's so that you're writing as a complete slave. It's uh, capitus maximus or something. I, I can never remember the the terminology but there's there's three kinds there's some um, there's uh, all all capitals and then there's capitalized which is the, the first letter of a, a word capitalized mm-hmm. and then then there's the uh, all non-capitalized but uh, it's extraordinary stuff i mean it's it's a lot to go into and go through but uh well let's see the if 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 you look at your birth certificate, you uh, you'll you'll see on it that um, you've got lots of square boxes. Now, if if you know anything about law, you'll you'll have heard of something called the four corner law, right? The four corner corner rule. Mm-hmm. And, and, and anything that's within four corners is not attached to anything else on the page. It's completely separate. It's it's not there. So, you know, you, you will always see, you know, to, to, like on your driving license, you know, sign within the box. Okay, so your signature is within the box. It's not on the piece of paper, but you don't know that. You haven't been taught that. You know, we, we're not taught these things. That's, that's for, I guess, for the lawyers and guys, you know, the ones who are keeping all this fraud from us. Mm-hmm. And uh, on, 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 on the birth certificate, you've got names one of the columns on the left is well first first you've got the number of uh, the births in in that hospital then you've got the day you were born you're actually born right uh, and then you've got names if any and then you've got one that says name and surname of father right mm-hmm. so that that tells you that the surname is not a name. Okay, law is very is very distinctive. It's it it means what it says. And uh, basically, when a policeman asks you for your name, you should only give him your your, your Christian names. Your given name. Your well, yeah, okay, given name if you like. But you know, we we live in this is um whatever it is. This society comes from Rome. Hmm. And, uh, and a lot of people don't realise that that we're still under Roman military rule. Um, you know, you, you look at United Nations flag, for example, it's got a laurel leaf around it, Roman. You look at um, I don't know, Department of Work and Pensions; they're investors in people. <laughs> I would say slave traders. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm, yeah. So uh, where was I? Yes. Okay. So you <clears throat> so somehow the surname that is in the square box that's under name and surname of father, the surname, which is normally all capitals, 
is somewhere along the line added to your name right it, it's it, it's not your name because your name is told you on your birth certificate which by the way you, you can't use it for identification no <laughs> have, you, have you looked at the bottom of a, a, of, a of a birth certificate it, it says it quite clearly warning a, a certificate is not evident it's not proof of identification yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's right but you know to get to, to but to, to get a to get a this is where the fraud stuff it's, they're giving you this name it's like it's a jacket but the jacket doesn't belong to you but you wear it all your life and and you claim it you claim it as yours all the time but it, it doesn't belong to you and and this is a it's a difficult concept to to, to get over but it, it's it's getting there a lot of people are really getting getting the hang of this and uh, yeah what, what they've done with with the glosser is i mean we see glosser, the, the glosser every day. The, the glosser is all capital letters, right? And and as the word, word suggests, it's painting over something. It's it's hiding something. Something is hidden behind it. I mean, you know, you, you look at a newsstand every morning, and there's the glosser all shining out at you. It's all really glossy, uh, and really every word should have a full stop after it because there's no connection between them. The words are not connected. It's just we because we've been taught to read that way. We read it automatically. We read it, but it shouldn't be. It, we shouldn't. It should be a, 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 a full stop after every uh, every word. So, am I making sense to you? Yeah. So, essentially, anything that that is all in block capitals is not in English. It's got nothing to do with us. That's correct. That's absolutely right. But of course, as, as I say, we, we read it because that's how they've taught us. They've they've deceived us to do this. And. <laughs> So, so um, if um, a window envelope arrives with what looks like your name, but it's spelt in all capitals, and you simply write on there, uh, addressee not recognised, return to sender if possible, if not, return to dead letter office, you've done your job there. Um, well, uh, any, any window envelope that arrives, mm-hmm. um, if... This is this is Universal Postal Union rules law again. Um, as far as I understand it, envelopes uh, by law must be addressed. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, a window envelope is not addressed. You're looking through into someone else's mail. Yeah. Right. You get that. Hmm. But it's quite important, really. I think. But, uh, and uh, what I would do, um, I've been discussing this with a few people of late, and we've all come to the same conclusion. This is probably the best idea. Uh, write on it: "Return to sender, recorded for fraud," and then unclaimed. Okay, and then you go down to the post office and you get a receipt for that letter for returning that letter. Okay, so you've got a receipt of you returning this, having recorded it for fraud. So if they send you another letter in the same manner, they're, they're just piling fraud on top of fraud. Mm-hmm. And in your experience, does that stop the letters? Um, I haven't had I haven't had a letter for for bloody ages. Um, don't nobody writes to me. <laughs> it's quite mm. sweet. Actually. Well, do you get plenty of emails? Um, uh, I, I I do get emails, but not from not from, from officialdom, uh, not yet. Now I probably will talking to you guys. <laughs> well, it, yeah, yeah. Um, there's something that no, ties in with something. Worldwide. That, yeah, sorry, <laughs> something ties in with something that's happened to me recently. Sorry? Um I got uh, accused of speeding. Now, um, uh-huh. when the letter arrived, I just returned to sender, and. Several months passed, and then I got a phone call one day, and it was a young lady from the court, at which right. some hearing had apparently been held in my absence, and she said, how are you going to pay this £890? I said, pardon? She said, I said, I, I know nothing about it. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, well, you, you've been tried and convicted for speeding. I said, no, I haven't. I didn't know anything about it. You've got to tell me about it. So um, yeah. Yeah. I was then invited to go to court and do a statutory declaration, which I did, and said, no, I didn't know anything about it. Um, 
put my signature on the piece of paper. And then I got some more invitations to attend the, the same courthouse at a later date. Now, the first two of those invitations were adjourned. And the reason was given was quite bizarre. It didn't make any sense at all. And they've invited me to go a third time. Uh, that set me thinking that if I actually just ignore what they're doing, they've got no jurisdiction. Would that be the case? Oh, 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 oh. Um, they'll always claim they've got jurisdiction. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I, I think I think the best thing to do is unclaim. If if you don't claim, this this is the thing, right? The name, your mm-hmm. the name that you were given doesn't belong to you. Yeah, right. I, I, it's it's very hard to get this across to people because you know, from 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 day one you you're called a name and it's you know you, you came before it's 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 proper to you perhaps but it, it's not you right so you are when when you go into a court and they say you know to me they said are you Max Dutley right and I, and I said. Um, uh, is that is that the trust that you're you're operating today? You're administering today. Most people will just answer yes, and then as soon, of course, as soon as you answer yes, you've you've. What's happened is, um, until you speak in a court, uh, you are the beneficiary of your, of your name. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you start well, the name, you are no longer the beneficiary. You become the trustee. Um, so you, you get landed with everything. To, to look after the name. Ah, um, right. It, I, I've just it's, actually it's picked that... It's highly complicated. Um, yeah. And I, I, I've just actually laid my hands on that letter, Max, and it says the reasons for the yeah. um, w- adjournment, it says this matter has been adjourned because, one, to clarify plea or prove in absence... And then two, it says, as you or your legal representative have requested an adjournment. Well, I've requested nothing and I don't have a legal representative. So that's a bit slightly strange. They've sent me the same letter twice with with two adjournments there. OK, um, now to go into a courtroom, mm-hmm. I think uh, if it's a police court, which obviously speeding probably is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um Somebody is going to have to fill out a court management form, and um, this this is what happened to me. I mean, I, I refused the solicitor, mm-hmm. uh, so I didn't have legal. Uh, nobody was signing for me. Nobody was representing me, and it was obvious, you know. I I didn't sign anything. So for me to be in court, somebody signed this this particular piece of paper saying, "Yeah, yeah, I, I'll go along with this." Mm-hmm. So. I'd like to get hold of that one day. I'm sure I can. I'm sure I can. I'm, I'm, I'm not really. I, I'm not vengeful. I'm not. I don't want revenge. I just want. I just want justice. No, no not uh, not justice. That's a hard word in this day and age. You want leaving alone. Um, I want fairness. You, so, you want leaving alone. You uh, want... Yeah, I want. Do you know? Huh. Uh Pretty much. Pretty much. You know, if I if I do somebody some damage, then yeah, okay, fair, fair enough. enough. Yeah. There's a victim, but. All the, all this all this other stuff all these uh, I mean uh, I don't I believe you saw me speak didn't you Andy at, at Nottingham yes that's did right did you see see the chap after me Greg Hallett mm. who um, spoke about oh have we lost backs there uh, yeah we're, we're having trouble aren't we I think we're probably uh, need to dis- yeah. disconnect and reconnect again with Max uh, he's, he's, he seems to be having a little bit of trouble at his end Okay. Good there, Max. Oh, we're going up and down here. Ah, that's oh, it. We've got you again now. No, uh, hello. Ma- Thank you. 
Andrew K. Fletcher, originator of Incline Bed Therapy, talking to you on Raconteur News. And welcome back to Raconteur's News. Um, I hope you're enjoying your Tuesday evening so far. We've got a great guest on tonight, Max Stutley. And uh, we just started getting into what the gloss is about. And uh, are you back, Max? No, I Uh, think... I'm here. I'm here. Ah, yes. Welcome back, Max. Just needs turning up a bit. (laughs) <laughs> that's better I'm, 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 uh, do you want me to share Mm-mm. no that's nice and clear now Max 
Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. So where were we? Um... Can you hear us okay, Max? Yeah, we're losing it again, aren't we? Yeah, we seem to be having bandwidth problems there. Hello, Max. Hello, 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 hello. Ah, that's it. We've got I'm you through. Still... It's just chopping off odd words All of right. what you're saying, Max. Good. Right. Yeah, there are some odd words. Well, I, I think it's it's. Um, I mean, the same with both ways. Mm -hmm. Okay, where do we get to? Uh, the gloss. Yeah. So, yeah. The, the thing is, the thing is, one thing that um, it, it got to me. You know, um, there was a chap up the road. He's a, an oldish chap, and he got a letter from the council, and uh, it didn't have a signature on it, and it had lots of capital letters all over it, as well as apparently descriptive English, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he, he was, you know, he's an old fella, and, and it, it was freaking him out. You know, it was really, really freaking him out. Now, the thing is, any any piece of paper that hasn't got a signature on it is a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all it is. It, it's 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 so frustrating to see this. It, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, anything without a signature, it, it it's not real. It's stationary. It's not moving. It's not going anywhere. That's why they call it stationary. I, I know it's. It's all words. Everything, everything revolves around the use of words. Mm -hmm. It's like, like uh, there's a lovely word that uh, they use all the time. People utter, utter things. Now, you know, when we utter, it's like something comes out of our mouth. But in a courtroom, or in in law, an utterance is where somebody tries to give you a piece of paper, um, uh, it, fraudulently, in the sense that this piece of paper uh, is, is real. Uh, it's hard to explain that, but it's an utterance. Um, passing off a piece of paper as, uh, uh, well, passing off a count of it as, as real. Uh, that's called an utterance. Who would know, you know, if you if you don't look in these silly bloody law dictionaries? There's, <clears throat> that's the thing. We 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 live in we live in a military dictatorship. We have done forever, um, and most of the words are are, are military meanings like district administration um uh, company you know all, all they're all military words mm, that, and, that's uh, that's interesting max because uh, we had uh, rob b on a while back uh, and i remember one thing he said that if you want to understand what's going on around uh, you then uh, you need to read the joint services manual 2014 to, to... yeah that's right yeah that's right that's Sorry, go ahead, Max. Yeah, we seem to be losing Max, don't we? Um, I think the internet connection down there in uh, Torquay is not quite as good as it is in up here in the big smoke in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you back, Max? Yeah. Okay, I think we've got you back now. Ooh, we seem to be having problems um, if I can make a request Max um, could you possibly if, if drop the call put another quick tune on and uh, how, how should we deal with it ah you sound perfectly crystal clear as I was about to drop the call there if we... yeah what what I'll do if, if you could possibly um, close okay, your I'll do it Close your Skype down and... Uh, ah, it's we'll, gone. Okay, well, we could just keep chatting while Max comes along, can't we? Yeah, of course we can, yeah. No problem at all, mate. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Donald Trump's a time traveller? Oh, yeah, that's... Oh, oh, do you want to talk about words? Words that's... are great. Can't... We love words, don't we? Well, we're using them now. This is our art form. Yeah. We can't, really, we can't really drag words down, can we? Right. Oh, we've got Max back. Hello, Max. Hello there. That sounds Hi. better. Um, it's a little bit better. How are you doing, Max? Are we still there? Can you uh, pick up where you were left off, and we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. 
you hear me? No, no. I can't hear anything. No, we're just getting little bits of words. Um, I, uh, I, I'm getting you guys. Yeah. Um, what, what what might be best, if you could possibly do it, you, Max, is to perhaps um, give your machine a quick reboot and uh, call back in after that. Uh, we'll play a quick tune. We'll be back as soon as we can with Max. Okay, uh, sorry about that, folks. Welcome back. We've got Max back on the line. Um, we seem to be having a bit of a problem with bandwidth. Uh, so, would you like to carry on, Max? Sorry about that. Yep, I, I can carry on. Yes, right. We are. We're. We're on, are we? Um, okay. Yeah. So, well, basically, this chap was was in a terrible state with with reading this letter he was absolutely upset and and i tried to calm him down and say you know don't take any notice of it it's it's really not important it hasn't got a signature on it and uh, well it helped but um yeah so we're on we're on the glass so we're on we're on letters from councils and things like that um i i did a freedom of information request asking them uh which which style manual they they They, they have, which you know, most most of us don't. We, we we don't learn this stuff. We're not taught this stuff at school. And um, so uh, I waited and waited. I got a response eventually. They sent me the uh, oh, we use the same as Hampshire County Council. So I said that's very good. But um, what do they use? <laughs> so, got a bit ridiculous. So they asked me to shut up, please, um, until they could sort out what what. What I was talking about, um, I've yet to get back to them. I, I, don't, I don't really, uh, I don't know if it's even worth bothering with them. Um, we've uh, used this this information really to to well to to get to the point where we express our will. You know, um, in Totnes the other the night, I was I was. Uh, hearing about that they want to build this and they want to build that and everybody's up in arms about it but they can't stop them and you know the petitions don't work and and I said well you know go for an expression of will each one of you and, and, and the thing is it is a good idea if everybody could write a letter it, it's like I, I, I give the example of um, the Iraq war you know two million people apparently according to the police went down to London to demonstrate and protest against the Iraq war. Now, in my view, and I'm sure in, in, in the view of the Ministry of 
if they, or the or the prime minister's office if they'd have got two million letters through the post saying i reject the war with iraq um it would have had far more uh meaning far more meaning because they can ignore protests but they can't ignore letters they can't ignore them they can't shred them quick enough either and of course if you've got the original and you send a copy and and you send it instead of paying money to go on the train pay money to post a letter good money and, and you've got a, a registered letter which they've got to take and it, it all it's 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 like uh, um building building bricks find out what's going on because we, the yeah this is terribly frustrating and really? we keep losing you uh, all the time have you tried I, i'm just thinking andy uh, if you were to turn your video Stand. off the whole we might be able to get a better there we go see, right. if, see if that works i i'm right max carry on i've turned the video off that's better is it uh where was i um yeah um <clears throat> they they really don't like paperwork. Um, now I I it's this this law society this this whole the whole law business. Um, the Ministry of Justice set itself up as a private business in the year sixteen hundred. Um, what this is a, a lot of people don't realise that all ministry departments they're, they're all private companies. They're all registered on Dun and Bradstreet and and you know not necessarily companies house. Uh, wherever they're registered, I mean, um, I, I was looking on um, Dun and Bradstreet Street before they changed it, so you can't do this anymore. <laughs> but I was I was looking at a company called BIS Limited, which underneath it said also trading as Ministry of Defence. So the minute the Ministry of Defence is a trading name of BIS Limited now. I, I sent off three freedom of information requests, one to the Prime Minister's office, to the uh, Treasury and to the Ministry of Defence, asking who BIS Limited is. Mm. And um, the Treasury and the Prime Minister's office came back very quickly with, we have no information that will help you. <laughs> and, and, and I've yet to hear from the Ministry of Defence. Now, your guess is as good as mine as to who they are. Um, you know, we could say it's possibly the Bank for International Settlements, possibly the Baltic uh, Investment Services or something. Uh, no idea. But mm. basically, somebody, somebody owns the Ministry of Defence. Yeah, well, I, I gets, would say Bank of International Settlements is probably favourite but there, but I'm not sure they're a limited company in this country, but they may well be, I suppose. Oh, it doesn't doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be in this country. I mean, the the the, the IRS in America is registered as a company in Puerto Rico. Mm. Uh, 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 the the Commonwealth Office, uh, sorry, the Commonwealth of Australia is registered in Washington. Um, the BBC is registered, as far as I know, or parts of the BBC are registered in uh, Delaware. You know, um, when it comes, to, there are no countries. They, they, these countries don't exist. Countries are companies. Yeah, they're, they're all coming. It's, it's like the United Kingdom. It's it's, it's not a, a landmass. It, it's it's a piece of paper that says it's a, a company. Uh, I, 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 I want to go back to something that you said earlier on, um, yeah. uh, uh, and I, I think it's a, a fabulous point. And uh, I think society, this spectacle, as uh, society spectacle, has uh, has mentioned something in the chat room that it would have more effect if they had to sign for all these registered letters, two million people send in a registered letter rather Absolutely. than um, yeah. rather than all assembling and, and just being completely ignored and, and being able in, in, see in that way. There's no way to, to hijack that. There's no way to send in anybody that's going to stop that's, that's doing exactly any what violence I'm saying. or anything. That's exactly what I'm saying. And, and it, it's unequivocal. It's your will. It's, it's what you think and nobody can tell you what to think. You know they can they can persuade you otherwise in various ways, but if you write it down on paper, and I I I I don't use the uh, the name I was uh, the surname I was given anymore. I, I don't use it anymore. I don't don't claim it anymore. It's not mine, so I, I don't claim it. Max Stutely is uh, my my two given names. My my parents gave them to me. My sorry, my mother and father, mm. parents 
is is a is a commercial term. <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, so I I don't use my my family name or what was I suppose it's a family name um, you know surname as they call it the surety name basically because mm -hmm. uh, basically what what happened uh, the other thing on, on the birth certificate there's another date um, is is it says when registered and in in my case that was three days after I was born. Okay. So the, the 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 names I was given were registered on on I, I became I became the person the the, the corporation the um, the bond the trust the whatever they call it on three days afterwards after I was born so for three days I was just me without the jacket and uh, I I've been wondering about it for all my life and and I've been getting to, you know I, uh, years ago. Um, I started listening to Jordan Maxwell. You've heard of him, probably. Mm -hmm. Heard of his his work. Um, uh, I, I listened. I, I met John um, Harris. Uh, I got. I, I I watched the the British Constitution uh, Constitution Group stuff. You know of what people were talking about, and, uh, and I got very interested in all of it. And. Um, in fact, I will be I will be talking for I don't know ten fifteen minutes at the Winchester gathering on the nineteenth of November, which is the British Constitution Group meeting. Now I, I'm I'm not as I say I'm not I'm not actually a member of anything. I don't I don't I've been a mu uh, I've been playing music um, most of my life, trying to play in groups, and uh, groups are notoriously difficult to keep together. And the more the more heads, the more difficult it is. So, uh, you know, I don't I don't join groups. It's uh, better that way. And well, uh, you, you are now officially a raconteur, though. So <laughs> that's a form of group. <laughs> Myself and Andy are raconteurs, and, and, and you've you've now joined the ranks like, of the raconteur. I like the accolade. I must admit, it's rather lovely. I like what, it. Do you word. think? Um, I, what I've noticed is um, amongst people that are aware of these types of situations, there's a lot concentrated in such a small area in the southwest. Have you, do you have any idea, any clue as to why that would be? Um, I, I'm not so sure. Um, yeah, OK. I mean, Totnes has just started up. Um, Plymouth with, with the UK column. Um, which, you know, they, they've. I think they're great for sort of, sort of for introducing people to um, what's going on. And UK column news is very interesting. It goes behind the scenes of, of stories. It's good. Um, there's Penzance. There's a load of people down in Penzance who are wonderful. They've they, they've got meetings every month or so. Um, I, I can't explain it. I, I mean, I've been to Nottingham a few times, and I, I'm 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 in awe because people seem to have a, a really good idea of what's going on and, and it, it's great it's it's good and um, I mean when I spoke in Totnes it was great to look at the open mouths you know what <laughs> when, when you explain about the language about the words that you know it's it's really important that to get this across that the speech speech spoken word is just well it, it's it's why in the old days you know I mean it's folklore, you know. They even stole the word from us, law. They, they changed L-O-R-E to L-A-W, you know. In, in the old days, it was passed down by, by songs, um, poetry, speech, you know. Um, and and we, we've lost all that. And, and it's, um, it, it, it really does limit us. All, all, all the information we get now is from, well, I, I say... I'm generalising, but the television and, and everybody knows the same news. Every everybody knows the same thing. And yeah. when when you when you step out of that, and you start expressing other stuff to people, um, you know, wh whatever it is, even you know, even down to flat Earth or whatever, you know, you watch them bounce around the place, thinking, "What the hell is going?" You know, you're thinking about something that you're not supposed to think about, or something. I, I tell you what, I would I would rather spend an hour talking to a flat earther than I would talking to somebody who's an X Factor fan. Well, let me put it this way: um, I I I I, w I wouldn't say I'm a flat earther, but I will tell you that um, 
I have been looking for evidence of a globe. And literally, I stand on the beach and I look across the line, the, the Jurassic Coast going for miles. And I'm thinking, well, there should be a curve. I mean, there should be a curve. Why isn't there a curve? So I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I wasn't going to touch on that, but, you know, because people think you're crazy when you start saying stuff like this. But, you know, I don't mind. I don't really care what people think anymore. <laughs> that, mm. that, that's the spirit, Max. That is the spirit. <laughs> yeah, you, may, you mentioned the Nottingham meetups there, Max, and I've just put a link yeah. in the uh, chat room for the Facebook group. I'm not aware of, of anywhere else that's available, so if you're not on Facebook, get a friend who's on Facebook to have a look for yeah, you. Yeah, I, I, I do have Facebook, yeah. 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 Uh, I, know, I know several of our li- several of our listeners avoid Facebook like the plague. So uh, yeah, well, I, I understand that too. But you know, this this stuff's got to come out somewhere. And, you know, that's um, right. It, it's all it's uh, the, the, it's it's like at the meeting. It was interesting actually because I, I had great respect for Dell, um, who was talking about law stuff, and he didn't want anything recorded. He didn't want it to go out, and and. I like that in the sense it's it's like um, <laughs> as as making music you know it's great to sit, sit in a small room and play to people in, in intimate and and they all get it it's it's close it's lovely and uh-huh. you, you get to people and but you know when it goes out people can misrepresent things and you know I don't know it's it's not so intimate and you're always you're always a little bit guarded when the video is running. Um, about what you what you're going to say and, and how you say it. It's um, you know. but uh, this 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 glossy stuff. I'm I'm going to push um, uh, Rowan Lorian mm-hmm. on YouTube and the Glossy Channel um, because I think I think people should look at them. Um, it's it's basically right as I say we're we're military. We're in a military dictatorship, mm-hmm. uh, and um, it's. It, it's a preliminary situation most people are in. And there is a, a, a step after that called post limini. Now, Romley mentioned it in one of his videos. He said that he mentioned it to um, a, a barrister or something, and, and the, the barrister was always tearing his hair out saying, there's no such word, it doesn't exist, it's, it's, it's wrong, <laughs> wrong. You know. And, um, well, you know, it's, 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 it's most interesting to... Uh, I, I, I suppose it's confronting people with 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 these truths. Um, changing the subject just again. Can I go all over the place? But I'm going to f- talk about this because I think it might be of interest. Um, we we uh, a few of us down here had a. Uh, have, you, have you heard of Lioness Law? Lioness Sarah Lioness. We yeah. met, I, I met her. I met her at Glastonbury you, you met her, yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah. Okay. Well, she she's a uh, she's a good friend and. Um, she had a, a, a radio show on uh, Riviera FM, which is the local, you know, local internet radio down here. And uh, we, we, she invited me and another friend, Nick, to sit in and uh, help her through the shows. They were good long shows. And we, we, we made them chat shows and we got in Barrister. We got in um, people protesting about things. And, and one day we, we managed to get the local MP in. And we had him for two hours. And um, it was quite quite marvellous. Um, the the first thing that he was asked, I can't remember which one I asked. Asked it doesn't matter. Um, when, when you're in Parliament, you're representing everybody. You're representing us in, in this constituency. Um, do you understand the laws that you're passing? Do, you know, when you when you see an act of Parliament, do you understand it? He says, "Oh no, don't even read it." <laughs> we, have advi- <coughs> we have advisors that tell us which way to vote. Uh, it's, he said it's in a foreign language, and if you remember what I said about a foreign language, uh, you, you know, if a foreign language cannot legally you, you can't be taken to court on a foreign language. You know, it's got to be in the language that you understand. And uh, then, then later on in the show, I asked him about the. We asked him about the Magna Carta and Article Sixty One, which I'm sure you probably got some idea about. Um, mm-hmm. It's getting get, getting rid of the monarch. And uh, he said, oh, it's nonsense, it's, uh, um, it's in a foreign language. And I thought, okay, so that's in a foreign language, that's in a foreign language, and yeah, here we are. Um, he lost his seat at the next election. He's, he's now become a, a local councillor. Again, he's back, he's back in the local. 
but um, it, it was interesting. That, that's available on, on Mixcloud. I'm going to plug that one too. Uh, there's, there's plenty of interesting interviews uh, on uh, it's on the mixed cloud. It's Lioness Raw. It's called R A W Lioness Raw. It was it was good fun. That was we did about I don't know fourteen shows or something, and interviewed some interesting people and confronted them. And and I think it's good because I mean, when, when I when I speak to my local people now, well I don't I don't I don't really speak to them. But but you, you tell them what you want. There's, there's no point in asking them what they're going to do for you because they'll tell you what they're going to do for you. What we really need to do is we need to be telling them what we want them to do for us. And the only way we can do that is through these expressions of will. And um, I, I think this is really important. I think I think Jason's picked up on it. I think, imagine two million, two million letters saying, I reject any war with anyone, you know. I mean, that's the end of it, isn't it? full mm. stop you would it's, think um, so well if they go against the will of the people you know which is what they're about to do with uh, the Brexit as well which is <laughs> <laughs> oh god ah dear yeah, we, but we can use we can use this information um, to our to our benefit you know we can what we what we've been doing before we learned about the glossa, we've been we were putting in um, notices of conditional acceptance, you know, for uh, council tax and and well, actually not council tax, but for parking fines, whatever that sort of thing. But um, for council tax, we found another another little uh, little number which is very interesting. Um, the local government act, I think it's 1974, section 151 says that there's, a, there's one officer who has a fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayer. So um, there's somebody in every council who's responsible to make sure that every penny the council spend um, is, you know, it's lawful and legal. Mm, I've, I've heard of these Section 151 officers before. Um, often quite a difficult job finding out who they are, isn't it? Um, well, the, it's normally the chief finance officer of every council. Right. Normally, uh, and and you should be able to find. They are difficult to find, but if you go to um, the it's the statement of accounting for every, the yearly statement of accounting, he or she has to sign that off. So you'll find the name there, and we write we write private notices. In other words, we, we, we're not writing to the office of the, the officer. We're writing to the man or woman who is that officer. So you're writing an, a, an actual a private letter to them saying, yeah, we'll pay you what you're telling us that we owe you as long as you give us a, um, well, a lawful contract for starters. And um, in case you're not sure what a lawful contract is, it's it's got four primary uh, departments really um, you've got to have full disclosure which means that um, nothing will be added or removed at a later date everything that's in the contract is what's in the contract nothing else um, then you have consideration which means that all the people who are signing it get to say what they want out of the contract and then you've got to have lawful terms and conditions which is obviously fair enough and here's the important bit you've got to have the wet signatures of all contracting parties. So, so if you're contracting with, for example, in in, in our case, it's uh, Torbay Council. We want a signature from Mr. Torbay Council. Hmm. Okay. Now they can't give you that. No. Like the next the next thing you want, they can't give you a lawful contract either. Um, the next thing that you want from them is a proper. Um, a, a proper um, bill, a proper bill, you know, an actual bill, which means that Mr. Torbay Council also has to sign that. You're not going to get it. Mm. So, um, so now what we do is we send back everything, um, anything that's especially when it's a window envelope, we just cross it off, send it back, return to sender. We're, we're now putting on um, recorded for fraud because it's fraud, and they know it's fraud. And, and we're all beginning to realise it's fraud and 
you know, they, Tony Blair changed the for all for act or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh no, he changed uh, treason, didn't he, to uh, save himself? <laughs> oh yes, that was just in the what do they call it? Uh, washing up as they leave Parliament, they rush through a few That's quick one, laws, yeah. don't they? And uh, obviously, didn't want to be hanged by the neck until he was dead. So he thought he'd better get rid of that one. Something like that, I think. Yeah, yeah, mm. you know, a bit of protection. Yeah, so. Um, uh, I've, I've, I've got nothing against it. I, I, I will pay council tax for sure, but, you know, I want I want to know where it's going. You know, the, the idea that I'm spending 30, maybe up to 30% of the money, the money that I'm giving them is being spent on their pensions doesn't really, um, I, I doesn't really wash very well, for one thing, and, and wherever else they're investing this money, you know, because they're not going to tell us. We, we don't hear where it's going. Mm-hmm. And this this is the point. Yeah, it, but, it was interesting. Um, something that um, they've come up, uh, they've got in the Irish court where um, oh, I, I don't know the details of it that well. But um, from what I understand, there's been a ruling over there to say that all circuit and district judges have no jurisdiction over private property they only have jurisdiction over commercial matters which right. means that that any any monetary dispute is is a commercial matter and um this this is it now we're, we're getting into public and private um, yes now the the name that you were given that's on your birth certificate is public it's owned by the public mm-hmm Right, so if you claim it, if you claim that name, you are a public employee. You are working for the public. Mm-hmm. Okay, now then you've got the private. Uh, I, I think uh, there are quite a few people that know about this, that, that uh, you know, they're, they're, that the rich and elite will know about this stuff. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just delving into it now, really. Um Basically, you, you we are we are all man, male and female. Mm-hmm. It, it it goes back to me. It goes back to the Bible. You know, they, they in the courts they use the Bible for getting the truth out of people, which is ironic, given what I've said earlier. Mm-hmm. But but um, there's there's a really interesting passage at the beginning of the Bible where it says, uh, you know, God, this created character. Uh, well, let me start off by saying that that. The Bible I've got has got the first the first four words say in the beginning God, and they are written all in capital letters. So, the very first four words in the Bible are glossa. It poisons glossa because they're they're not actually even connected by. Uh, uh, gosh, sap. Sorry, that was my Sounds phone like, there. Oh, that's Jimi Hendrix, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's Andy Young. That's Andy <laughs> Young, is it? All oh, right, okay. Oh, that's cool. You, you're not a musician, are you, Andy? No, but the phone was given to me by someone who is. So, all oh, right, okay, okay. Fair Hence dude. the call cool ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now, where was I? Um, damn, damn, slipped away that one. The teeth cold too. <laughs> no, um, yeah, poisonous glosses. Yes, the Bible, the beginning of the Bible. Um, yeah, God created man, male and female, and this is in the, the first chapter of the Bible. And then you get to the second chapter of the Bible, and quite early on, this character called the Lord God appears, and the mm-hmm. Lord God, he, he's his his. Lord is all in capital letters, so that's glossa, right? So it's not the same the same God creator as as the first chapter, and you can tell it's not because he's looking around and he says, um, "Well, what a wonderful world!" Only the only problem is there's no man, so I'm going to create one. I'm going to form one out of the dust. Mm-hmm. So you've got you've got the creator in the first chapter who 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 makes the species male and female. And then you've got this one in the second chapter who makes a single man. Now, I, I, I think, I, you know, I've theorized a lot. We've talked about this a lot between us. And 
it, it, it's sort of it's almost like that's where um, well that's where we started tilling the soil Be- before this time we, we were we were living in abundance um, you know everything was provided for us we didn't need to kill animals we didn't need to well I don't know maybe we were hunting gatherers I don't know um, that's speculation but then along then we started agriculture or as a friend of mine calls it angry culture monoculture where we completely and utterly destroying we're destroying the land and and we, we you know all the food suddenly gets locked up behind doors and gets sold which it never had done before and i, I think this is what the, the first page is telling us this the story of what happened then and i think um the idea is to get back to um you know abundance and I, and I and i think we're perfectly capable of doing that mm-hmm. and, and especially with especially now with the information we've got against that we can use against these corporations that that's obviously running us now we can do it because we, we need to get to the, the people behind the corporations the corporations don't exist mm-hmm. they are all fictions and and it's the people who are behind them that we we have to confront because they're, they're the people who have, obviously, the agendas. Mm-hmm. But how do we actually get to them, Max? That's the tricky bit, isn't it? Um, yeah, well, I think, I think we have to go through our... Um, we, we have to start at the bottom. We, ha- we have to, you know, apparently the next level above us are, are our councillors and our MPs. Mm-hmm. Now, if, if we can actually make it plain and clear to people that they don't represent us, which I mean, I, this this film on on Talky Talky TV on uh, YouTube, that where where I I asked the MP to be my fiduciary, he actually says, um, I I I can't represent you because I only represent the electorate. Mm. Right now, now I I'd introduced myself as man inhabitant, and. Um, uh, there's, there's an old an old Act of Parliament from 1888, I think it is, Local Government Act, which set, says that uh, the duties and liabilities of inhabitants shall be and become the duties and liabilities of the county council. Um, which means, hang on a minute, if you're an inhabitant, you're you're going to be looked after because. That's what that says. That's what that law says. Mm-hmm. Okay, and and so what they do to get around that is they send every every household a letter every year because it's got to be it's an annual thing that says, "Are you happy with the government of the time? Are you are you happy with the way the with the way you've been governed?" Um, you might not recognise the, the words, but it's basically it's sent to the occupier. And it, it is, you know, sign here if you want to vote. Right? And you register to vote. Now, this, this is where it gets interesting. I, you, when you register something, I, I found, found this with the car and everything. What you do is you, you hand over title ownership of whatever it is you're registering to whoever it is you're registering mm-hmm. it to. So you don't Otherwise, own it Otherwise, why the need to register it in the first place? It, exactly. Right. So... You hand over title ownership of your voice because a vote is from the Latin voce, it's voice. So you're handing over title ownership of your voice. You have just given up your voice. So it doesn't matter how much you protest and petition and object, um, somebody, owes, some, somebody else owns your voice. The, the words that are coming out of your mouth mean nothing to them because you've handed all responsibility to someone else. Mm-hmm. Okay. And a lot of people don't actually realise that. And if you look in um, the Representation of the People Act, with, which is also full of glosser and full of font changes and, and, and bold writing, it, it's all, all of it is, is strange writing. It's, it's all foreign. It's, it's not English, descriptive English, what that we learned, but it looks like it. And in there, on section 202 of that act, you'll find the interpretations now now most most acts have an interpretation part so if if you don't know what words mean you can look in that and see what they are and and in this one it's got persons and voter now a person it according to that act is 
includes, which is a fantastic legal word, includes um, association corporate or unincorporate. Now, in the legal language, if you include something, the inclusion of one thing is the exclusion of all, all other things. So it is only that. It is only an association corporate or unincorporate. That's, that's a person. Okay, and then a bit further down, it's got voter, and it says voter is a person voting by proxy. So you, you're sort of like three times removed from being a real living being. You're some total fiction that has absolutely no bearing on reality whatsoever. So I, I, I wrote to mine in a notice, uh, my local council, and I said, well, look, I'm, 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 I'm not handing... I'm not handing you um, ownership of my vote. I'm keeping it for myself. I will let you know how I feel about things at my leisure. Thank you very much. And that's that's how I've started writing. If well, I've, I've only written a couple um, expressions of will, so that they know how I feel. So they can turn around and say, "Well, we know we know Max's will. <laughs> we, we know Max's will. <laughs> you know, we can all do this. We can we can." Slow our, slow our, because our local governments have been taken over by um, all sorts of people, all sorts of strange people, from Agenda Twenty One to um, oh, Common Purpose, Common Purpose. I mean, every, every town has got a local plan. I mean, Totnes, the, the, the way they were talking about it is they're proud of having a local plan. And I said, well, hang on a minute, that that local plans come from Rockefeller Plaza on in New York. From the from the United Nations building, it, it's it's there's nothing local about this at all. If you look in the next town, it's got a local plan too, and it's 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 that's the way they've they're, they're biting away at us. Oh, I, I, I see them every day. I see them every day, Max. Um, I, 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 today I was driving into Sheffield and on my way home, and I had to go past the university, and it would must have been kicking out time. Mm -hmm. uh, last bell must have gone. So there were loads, of, loads and loads of students um, walking up, and, uh, and you you see them. And my wife w was recently a student, and, and only this year graduated. So I went to graduation, and you see them, and and the they really are churning robots out. Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, you know. Um, well, the way I put that is, <laughs> you know, when you're born, you're really bright. You know. You, if if you've if you if you've got a child if you well if you've got offspring ch child is also a, a, a corporate word we shouldn't be using it if you've got offspring you'll see you know they're they're bright they want to they want to learn they're they're so full of what's going on and of course you know um, you go to school and what happens in school they give you less on you know they want you to be less on mm. they give you less on uh, it's I know it sounds silly but that's it's all about words and. You know, if you don't learn your lessons, you're going to be more on. You know, it's 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 crazy the way these words flow like this. And if you do learn your lessons, you'll just be a good corporate slave. Absolutely right, and and you'll pay your taxes, and and you know we'll keep having the wars that you know. Yeah, and that's that's a strange thing. Um, one one thing I do want to talk about is um, a lot of people are getting evicted, or or they've got. Uh, They've got they've got uh, debt collectors coming around to their houses. Mm, absolutely. There, there's a, there's an easy way to get rid of them. Uh, I, it's four words, and um, they understand them even if we don't. And that is, you are now trespassing. Mm. And, and it's very important because from that moment on, they are trespassing. Right, and and then you can tell them if you like. If if I have to tell you again, it will be aggravated trespass and if I have to tell you a third time it'll be criminal trespass but you won't have to because they'll be gone by then they, they, they know they know they're not they haven't a foot to stand on oh does that so, work better than I don't answer questions yeah, well yeah <laughs> yeah because <laughs> I don't answer questions is, is pr pretty much nothing you know it's, it's not a defence or anything but if you say to them you are now trespassing they are actually trespassing it's it's a crime you know forgive those who trespass against us if you say somebody's trespassing against you it's criminal full stop and they know it they they, they understand these words we, we've uh, 
we we have on on Talkie Talkie TV YouTube channel. We we've got a one fairly we, we call it our famous film because um, RT used about eight seconds of it or something in one of their um, one of their reportages, and um, it's basically uh, the bailiffs came to the, the. Sorry, even I'm doing it now. They're not they're not debt collectors. They're bailiffs. Um, you know, and we had this. This film lasted for about, oh yeah, gosh, forty-five, maybe, maybe even an hour, and we're standing there arguing with these ruddy people. And um, there's three policemen there, who I said, you know, these these guys, these guys are committing fraud. You should be arresting them. And he said, arrest them yourself. And okay, it went on, and basically they they, they went away with their tails between their legs because, well, the, the piece of paper they were trying to sort of hand over or to say that they were there on the warrant, the liability or it it wasn't it was signed with a squiggle. We said, Well who signed that? They said there's a JP. I said, Yeah, well it's supposed to, a signature has this is something that everybody should remember. A signature is not only the squiggle, it's also the printed name underneath to tell you whose the squiggle is. Yeah. So that's a Which that's a whole sense, signature. Really. Yeah, of course. You know, because if you just get a squiggle on a piece of paper it's not a signature. Um the sign of nature. Is what a signature is, which brings uh, the third, the three dimensions into their two-dimensional world of stationery. Yeah, so um, they eventually left these guys. With oh, one of them went off and came back twenty minutes later with another squiggle on it. <laughs> 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 you know, as if he'd popped off to the local JP and said, "Here, sign this, will you?" You know, and uh, we laughed at that. And um, <clears throat> then they left. And then uh, the the sequel to that is one from I think from from last last summer. Um, this chap came walking up the up the pathway, and uh, Nick said, "You're trespassing. You're now trespassing." Just turned and walked. It, it was you know from from an hour to two minutes. Wow. And, and yeah, well, yeah. The, the, the thing is, with trespass as well, is it's the only tort where you don't have to prove a loss to get a remedy. Right. There you go. That's, that's why right. it's so powerful. Yeah, that's right. And they know it. And also, yeah. when, a, when, a, when, a, when a policeman grabs hold of you, uh, everybody shouts, assault, assault. Well, it's not assault. It's battery, that's, isn't it? That's right. That's, that's why they, don't, they laugh at you, you know. They don't care because you've, you've got the crime wrong. It's battery. It's battery, yeah. Assault apparently is verbal. Well, it, assault is is anything which makes anyone fear harm, isn't it? I think that's probably right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, I I I don't know too much about the law. That's why I, I ask people about it. You know, mm-hmm. or I, I I look up in the dictionaries and stuff to see what these things are. I but, remember because that's the thing. Every, everybody has to do this themselves. It, it's like everybody's everybody's waiting for someone to come along and do it for them. And, and <laughs> it's incredibly true. Yeah. And 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 I we've all got to do it about. ourselves. Hey. Eh? No, that no. You? <laughs> um, well, I'm telling you, it ain't. <laughs> everybody's got to write their own letters. Everybody's got to sign their own autograph. This is right, but it's, it's, somebody's going to come up with the idea to write a letter rather than going down and protesting, saving yeah. uh, like 50 quid, uh, uh, you know, yep. and your time and your energy. But th- yep. this is, they've got it wrapped up because the, the, the system is such that people react to everything in, in an emotional state, which means that they can't think properly and they think, right, you know, because if, you, if you're fair thinking, if you're yes. thinking straight, you think, right, a letter's going to be more powerful because if two million of us send a letter they're going to at least we're going to create some jobs because we're going to need people to open them <laughs> well how, how do they how, how how do they how do they tell you what to do you know they, they don't come around to your house and and say you've got to do this they just send you a letter you know any exactly. any, com- any company just sends you a letter I mean, and, I, and, I, think, I, and, and people should think of the impact that when they get a letter the impact that it has on them and, and just turn that around and send a letter back. That, that's right. That's right. You know, um, I mean, a, a notice of conditional acceptance, for example, is um, if you want to go down that, that road, uh, if you're promising to pay, um, you're never going to go to court because you've, 
you've you've got rid of all conflict and and court is about conflict it's you know it's conflict resolution there's if there's no conflict then there's no court case mm-hmm. so if you write if you write a letter saying i will pay if you provide me with you know the contract the the, the bill and 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 statement of accounting or whatever and and that's it that's the end of the game i i did it uh, i did it with barclay card bless them it was very nice of them um while I had my uh, deregistered car, I, I did get a few um, uh, parking tickets because I parked it outside my house, which was a residence parking. And, of course, I wasn't going to buy a residence parking permit. Mm-hmm. And um, it amounted to, I don't know, quite a bit. By the time the, the debt collectors came, it, it was about two grand or something. And, and just, to, just to get them out of the house... Because there were, we had um, eight policemen and five debt collectors, and interestingly, this this bloke turned up. <laughs> um, actually, it was a funny day. I, I'll tell you about that. It was a funny day. Um, we we had a, a local beat manager cop who, who who a policeman who walked up and down this area, and, and we invited him in one day to have a chat. Me and my brother, and we were chatting away and um, telling him all about this stuff, and. Um, he was in for an hour and he used the toilet he had a cup of tea and all this sort of thing and, and then I, I got up and for some reason the front door was open Can't, don't know why and there was this bloke standing in the hallway and he pronounced himself to be a bailiff so I just, I just said uh, Duncan <laughs> and you should have seen the look on this guy's face when this black policeman in full uniform walked out of our living room into the hallway and they just looked at each other. It was like, oh, cognitive dissonance. It was like, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, and it was quite. It was just amusing. And then it was, uh, went on for a few hours because you know, I, I was um, I, again. I was young then. I didn't. I didn't know all this stuff about Glosser and all, all this stuff about law. I had no idea about it. And um, I ended up getting rid of them. Oh, this chap turned up. Who, who just sort of barged past us and walked in. I said, who the, he- who the hell are you? And he said, uh, this badge. He showed me this badge hanging around. Said, this badge, I, with this badge, I can go anywhere, anywhere in the country. I thought, oh, well, come in. Come in, why don't you? You know, God knows what he was. I, I, I have a feeling he might have been, um, um, well, I, 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 I don't know, maybe, maybe it might be a bit grandiose of me, but I think, you know, um, We've been looked at by various, um, should we say, security services or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. They might have come in and planted bugs or something. I don't know. I don't know what they did. But we had eight policemen and, and five debt collectors in the house. So I eventually I paid it off using my Barclay card, you know, credit card. And then I thought, Christ, now I'm really in debt. How am I going to? I know what I do. So I wrote to the chief executive officer of Barclay Card found out his name, wrote to him and I said I'll pay you every penny uh, as long as you'll give me a contract, a full statement of accounting and a proper bill please I got a letter back from Barclay Card saying you've been looking at the internet haven't you <laughs> and I didn't answer it because it wasn't any of the three things that I, I required and, and I, I think I'd maxed out on my credit and um I've never heard anything since. Wow. Never been yeah, back. But I, I mean, Max, I mean, some people who might be critical of that, I mean... Uh, All right. Well, shall I explain credit then? There's a lot well, of people... You can, think... explain, you, you can explain credit. You can explain credit. Um, I, all, I'm, all I want to do is I just want to put a devil's advocate sort of um, yeah, uh, sure. point of view across that, that you've um, used this credit facility... And yep. then you've done, you've used trickery to, to sort of get out of it. As, no. as, as well, as, as yeah, I, I people, know people, people may that, say you have. Okay, I, let's let's explain it then. Um, right, there's there's credit and there's loans. Now, mm-hmm. if you get a loan, if you go down to a loan shark and you borrow money off him, he's going to give you cash. Mm-hmm. Right now, you know that he's he's given you cash. And you've got to pay him back. It's a loan. You've got to pay him back, and he's going to charge you interest, whatever. Now, credit, um, what happens with credit is that you ask a bank to go to the Bank of England and get money for you. That's yours. Now, this is going to sound very strange to people, but money doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, 
<clears throat> it, it's uh, they, <laughs> we're being used. We're, well, we're slaves. We're debt slaves, obviously. Um, it's it's uh, gosh, how to explain this? Um, it they open a line of credit. And the only way that they can get money from the Bank of England is with your signature. So, so you ask for, you get a piece of paper and you put on that paper, I want, say, you know, say a thousand pounds. They go to the Bank of England, they get a thousand pounds and then they give it to you. And then they say, you've got to pay us back the thousand pounds that is yours, that we, we, we acted as agent for you to get it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. You there? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And, right, and 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 that's what they do. They want you to pay the whole thing back to them, but it, it's your money. And well, okay, you can pay them a a, a service charge for, for doing it for you. But that you know that's that's where the game stops. Mm. And then of course they put interest on it, and they put it's compound interest. And it's the banks. It's the banks playing the usual bankers' games. So it, essentially, just to sum that up, no loan ever takes place from a bank because, as far as I'm aware, under their um, their own charters, banks are not actually allowed to lend money. They're only allowed to that's, facilitate that's credit. Right. That's right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. But, um, but sorry, my problem. My problem is is that is that when you've entered into these, when you've done this, when you've taken, that you've got the, the you've had some advantage um, based upon this credit that's been given to you, and you've agreed to that credit, and, and if you've agreed to that credit, then obviously the honourable thing would be to 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 especially if when you're in this position and you know how things are created mm -hmm. is it not is it not morally right for you to then honor that agreement and then understand what's going on and not enter in into in, in any other ones well well, well well jason it turns out that you don't have a contract there isn't a contract you know there's a, there's only one signature and it's yours Mm. Right, so yeah, so uh, yeah, and, and all, all, all I'm mean, trying to do is I, I'm trying to keep the conscience clear. I, mm. I think that people should be honourable, and, and I, 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 I agree. I agree. Yeah. Go, going into these credit contracts w with knowing um, that using this information to be able to then use that to their advantage. You know, anybody I, who I, I, I thoroughly agree with you, which is why I've, I I I I, don't, I no longer have a credit card. You know, mm. it's it's finished. I don't I don't use them anymore. I'm I'm not giving the banks the opportunity to rip me off even more. And I had one for God knows how long it was, and goodness knows how much I paid into it over the years. You know, as as a revolver, because you know, that's that's what they call you. If you only pay the uh, the minimum amount every every month, then you're a revolver. They know that you're going to be. They've got you for life. They've mm. got you. Yeah, and it's a. Um, and, I absolutely uh, I understand, understand the psychology and the, the tactics. I, I, things are deplorable, yeah. but all I all I want to do is I just want I just want I don't want people to deliberately go out and and use this information to be able to defraud, um, because it, it's in the, at the end, defraud. no, 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 it's not defrauding. It's it's actually exposing the fraud. But but if you it's, it's, oh, okay, but I mean, if you I mean, if, 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 if you go in, if, and, if, no, no, seriously, knowing what's going to happen. If, if I'd have been, well, at the time, I, I knew nothing about it, but I learned about it. Now, if, 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 it, if I were now uh, dishonourable and I had been fraudulent with them, they'd take me to court, wouldn't they? For fraud. But they haven't because I've offered to pay them when they show me the contract. Yeah, and essentially by doing that, you, you are acting honourably. I'm, I'm trying my very best to be honourable. Yes, mm. I, I will pay them. I, I'm, I'm, you know, if they can show me that they actually should be paid, they can show me where they got the money from, and they'll all they'll be able to do is show me that they got the money from my signature. Mm. In other words, my signature created that money. It's got nothing to do with them whatsoever. So the honour is well, you know, it, it's it. Remaining in honour is, is it, they make it as hard as they possibly can. Mm. Well, uh, Mithrin's just written in the chat room, uh, if the banks were honourable, this wouldn't happen, which is absolutely <laughs> true, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, they're, they're not going to be honourable. Um, you know, but, but, you but you can't, you can't judge your own behaviour based on the bad behaviour of the people that you, that you are opposed to. You can't do that. You can't say, you know, they're doing something bad, so I'm going to do something bad. I just think that people... Well, what's, what's bad about it? 
Mm. Well, I'm just saying that if somebody now thinks to themselves, right, I'm going to go and get a credit card, I'm going to oh, do, no. do 10,000 well, quid, uh, and okay, then I'm not then, going to pay then, it back, and I'm going to do I, this. I, that's I, what I, I that's agree what with I'm you. talking about. I agree with you. That's dishonourable. Every man for themselves on that one. That, that's it's, that's, it's, what I'm, it's, that, that's it's all I'm honor. saying. I'm not saying that the banks are Archangel Gabriel or that, that you know that, that they're, they're doing anything that they're doing is honourable. But what I'm yeah, saying is for hang, your hang. soul, you need to stay honourable yourself, no matter what yeah, your, your okay. adversary does. Yeah, OK. Um, well, one of, one of the things that um, the, the, the BCG group is, is going on about is this Bradbury Pound. Have you heard about that? Yeah, um, yeah. Where it basically it's going to be debt free, in, interest free money from the treasury rather than interest money from from banks, and 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 uh, Totnes, for example, in Bristol, they've got the there's the Bristol pound, there's the Totnes pound. Um, loads of people are now, well, as far as I know, there there are more communities now who are producing their own uh, local currency. Right, and and that's that's going to get rid of the banks. I mean, well, that's going to make the banks operate in a different manner. You know, the the banks are the banks are taking the mickey, mm, and I, they have been they have been ever since they started. I know, did because they're the one, they're the ones basically who started the ideas of corporations in the first place. Uh huh. I did hear a whisper the other day, uh, Max, that uh, Roger Hayes is about ready to go with the Liverpool pound as well. Good. That's good. That's all good. That's that's marvelous. Uh, Roger Hayes. Well, that. Again, that's going back because he was obviously the man in. Um, uh, he was the Birkenhead. Uh, what was it? Release Roger. Yes. That's what we were chanting. <laughs> um, we we were fortunate to be invited up to Birkenhead uh, in 2011, I think it was, when um, Judge Peak was arrested by the people. I, I, I don't know man. Let's say arrested by man. Mm-hmm. Male and female. I don't like using the word people either. It's um, the more I look into all this, the, the, the more you look at what words mean, and 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 you realise that they're, they're 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 not expressing exactly what we 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 think they are. Mm-hmm. And people people is a nation, not not necessarily um, a, a nation. Is I mean like we all have imagination. <laughs> we mm-hmm. imagine a nation, so we do it. We imagine a nation. And and we stick to that nation. It's a belief. It becomes a belief rather than just imagine, imaginable and imagining. So when you hear so many people get um, uh, calling themselves "we the people," they're perhaps uh, <sighs> not quite it's aware just, of what that not, means. Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. And you know, I mean, "we the people." That's the uh, which one is that? The uh, independence or the constitution? I can't remember. But basically, whoever signed that are the people who are on it. They, they are we the people. Nobody else. Nobody mm-hmm. else has signed it. You know, it's like we, we, all, we all go through life with this idea that, um, yeah, well, you know, we, we're, we're British. We've got to do this and we've got to do that because we're British. And hang on a minute. First, first and foremost, we are man, male and female. First and foremost. And I think that's, that's one of the problems that... that uh, we're up against is that people don't really well people against you know, folk just don't grab hold of the fact they're man they they, they are a name no I, i'm this name i'm really this name and i've got to do what they tell me this name has got to do instead of actually coming back but there there is an awakening there is i mean obviously i mean your show is pulling these sort of people out you know to to talk about it it's this awakening is 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 going throughout the world it, it's I don't know maybe it's a frequency change or something I've no idea because basically we're all frequency mm-hmm. so we are all get affected by it yeah and, these and are absolutely it, fascinating times we're living in Max uh, we're coming yes. into the end of the two hours now it's absolutely flown past what? as it always does when we get a guest of your calibre on um, have well, you sure have you got any talks that you're doing in the near future that you could perhaps alert people to if anyone out there it, it wants to come and have a listen to you well I, I've been invited to um, the watershed in Bristol this coming Saturday mm-hmm. Um there's there's a, another it's 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 basically under the the BCG the British Con, Con, uh, Constitution Group um, banner but I, as I say I'm not a member I'm, mm. I'm not really part of it but I you know I, I appreciate what they're at where they're at 
Um, so I'm going to be talking there. And I'll, I'll be talking about, well, I, I suppose the, the glossary and words. I, I think it's important that we understand that we're we're ruled by words, and uh, <laughs> it's it's easy to to learn the words. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Or, or unlearn the words. Yeah. But well, uh, other than that, I'm not really. I haven't got any other. I'm talking in Bristol on Saturday, and I'll, I'll be in um, Winchester at the Winchester um, occasion. That's, but, you know, I'm 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 open to um, if anybody wants to hear me ramble on for a, an hour or two. I'm quite happy to do it. Um, can I ask you, Max? Uh, one thing yep. that I know that our listeners are going to be on the edge of their seats and wanting to know, and uh, uh, and but uh, did you do the murder in Bath? <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. God, you uh, can tell us no, it's only yours. Elim- I was I, I was eliminated from the inquiry. I, I did oh. actually give I did actually give them my DNA, but they they said that they they destroyed it after so long or whatever. But I I don't believe them. Was oh that's that's the other thing. When 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 I went to prison, um, they didn't take uh, my fingerprints. They didn't give me a mugshot, and they didn't. What, what, what's the three things you got to do? Um, read your rights. Uh, yeah, they read me my rights, um, but it's, it's the mugshot, it's the fingerprints, and something else of uh, identity thing that they they take off you. Oh, DNA. Mm-hmm. They didn't take they didn't take DNA. Oh so, wow. So so I, I, I apparently I don't have a, a criminal record, and they haven't got my fingerprints, and they haven't got my DNA, and they haven't got a mugshot. Now, how does that work? I'll tell you how it worked, because when the policeman said to me, you have the right to remain silent, and anything you say will be taken down in evidence, blah, 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 do you understand? I realized that the word he was asking me was, do you stand under what I've just said? Mm. In other words, in other words, when he says to you, you have the right to remain silent, do you understand? If you say yes, the only right that you actually have from that moment on is the right to remain silent. You have waived every other right just like that without even realizing you've done it so i said no and and um that's that's the point really this is what people don't realize it's like the human rights act i i I read that the other day i was looking through it and i was i was thinking well where's the definition of human then so i was looking through it and the interpretations at the back no definition of human everybody wants to be human Mm. and (laughs) This this creator in their Bible, right? He created man. He didn't create humans. He didn't create persons. He didn't create human beings. He created, I say he, you know, man. Apparently, that's that's what they're going on. You know, whether I believe it or not, it doesn't matter. It's what they use. You know, it's 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 what they use that's important because, you know, that's 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 the gig they're on, and they want us to be persons. And they've got all weapons, and we've got uh, all we've got is our voices. And uh, it's been a, a great voice tonight, Max. Um, absolutely superb show. Um, I'm sure you agree, Andy. Yeah, I've absolutely loved it. And I, I knew as soon as I heard Mark, uh, Max speaking at Nottingham, I thought we've got to get this guy on the show. And I'm really pleased Bless we have. Hands. I do hope you'll come back sometime in the future and let us know how things are progressing, Max. Um, yes, indeed. Yeah, and we'll I hope I'll see you in Nottingham, uh, you know, on, on occasions. Oh yeah, I mean that that's perfect for us because it's it's the nearest meet up to us and um the the meetings that Paula runs there you get some great speakers on there and uh, yes, really absolutely, yeah. really enjoying the vibe that's there there's some I mean like you said Nottingham does seem to be pivotal there's so much going on in Nottingham um, we seem to be there nearly every other weekend it's just a fabulous place Get yourself to some of those meetings. They're usually around the twentieth of the month at the Navigation Inn in Nottingham. And um, right. if you go to Nottingham Free Thinkers on Facebook, you'll be able to find them there. But we'll have to wrap up. So thank you ever so much, Max. Uh, thank you thank to you everyone very for much listening. for having me. It's been wonderful. Thank you both of you. It's great. Thank you. You're Cheers. more than welcome, Max. And thank you to everyone who's listening. And uh, we'll be back next Tuesday and we'll be joined then by Andy Mackey, also known as The Truth Machine. And uh, Andy will be talking about some of the disturbing things that have um, happened to him as a result of his um, 
brushes with the police, shall we say. Um, and it's the time of year is approaching when he always seems to get hassled. So uh, we'll certainly be looking forward to giving Andy a voice. Um, but... I'm going to have some fun with this one here. Woo-hoo! In the morning, when I wake up, all I want is marijuana. In the evening, when I'm thinking, all I want is marijuana. If you look in my eyes, you see what I Every minute, every hour of every day But life is like a smoke In the end I'm gonna choke So all I do is live my life from day to day Oh my God, you know you better watch your shabby Cause I know you're waiting on that one Cause I'm telling you cause I'm none Cause you know the one I said Take a for way run, you let me see you do that run Run of the wood that they clan of the wood that done Cause I know you can never be me now what you wanna do Cause I'm about to break it down me Cause that's all that cause you know you cannot fade me now that you wanna You better back it on that because I'm telling you What bum 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 cause I can't wonder Cause you know you like the way I put up pick up Cause I'm telling all your fools what I put up And in the mercy Now what you wanna do And in the mercy Now what you wanna do And in the mercy Now what you wanna do And in the mercy If you look in my eyes you see what I've done Every minute, every hour of every day But life is like a smoke in the end, I'm gonna choke So all I do is live my life from day to day You gotta lick it, stick it, bend it, crease it, stack it, burn it, pack it, roll it, poke it, roach it, smoke it, then you pass it to me You gotta lick it, stick it, bend it, crease it, stack it, burn it, pack it, roll it, poke it, roach it, smoke it, then you pass it to me. Come on, baby girl, let's get it going on. I'ma hit the highway and do it my way. It ain't no game, girl, so I don't play games. I keep it up straight, right up in your face. So make your mind up, cause life is too short. I got the vest on, boy, put your belt on. Stop acting all cool, like Kanye West, boy. You be riding through the wire and the camera get on fire. You don't want that, no. I don't want that, no. This goes out to pimps and chicks, so slow, slow. Hit the backseat when you're doing the licking, kissing, squeezing. Do the damn thing, man. You got to lick it, stick it, bend it, crash it, stack it, burn it, pack it, roll it, hold it, soak it, smoke it, get rid of it. You got to lick it, stick it, bend it, crash it, stack it, burn it, pack it, roll it, hold it, soak it, smoke it, get rid Stick it, bend it, crisp it, stack it, burn it, pack it, roll it, bone it, roach it, smoke it, then you pass it to me.